Hey things enthusiasts! I'm Alex Glow, video host and hardware nerd at Hexer.io, the community for open source hardware developers. I'm here to talk about the seven types of people who engage with open source hardware, how open source benefits each of those people, and how each can use Hexer to stretch their wings, whether they're a hardware beginner or masterminding a company. But before we dive in, let's talk about the big picture how open source hardware will help us build a more positive future for technology and society. First, it opens the door for everyone to understand the technologies that are increasingly woven into the fabric of our everyday lives. Second, it enables us to access and democratize new breakthroughs in science and beyond. Build an open source breakout for this new chip, or a 3D printed or low cost version of that expensive lab instrument. Third, it empowers us to make adaptations and upgrades to older technologies when they still have much to offer or as a springboard for newer tech. And fourth, it enables repair. You can truly own your devices and maintain them, especially with modular designs like the framework laptop, and save money, while keeping your stuff out of the landfill as more and more people start to understand and care about the end-of-life picture for our electronics. Finally, open sourcing development enables smaller companies to supply a wide range of well-developed products as alternatives to the few big players that tend to dominate any given market. So that's how open source benefits all of us. But for the people building hardware, what's your open source personality? Let's walk through seven types of open source developers. The magician, polymath, alchemist, astronomer, challenger, catalyst, and architect, who are the building blocks of Hackster.io and the broader open source electronics community. First, the magician is just learning how to blink an LED. This is a total beginner. They're looking to ramp up their knowledge and build skills quickly. Learning to solder, for example, learning what a transistor is, learning to interact with matter on its own terms and make it move and speak when it's all still so magical. Because there is something magical about being able to sense and control the world around you. That first moment is so special that Rong Zhong Li wrote a traditional quatrain about it in his tutorial for the OpenCAD. For these people, a wealth of open source designs have been published in magazines and manuals for decades before the internet even existed. They may be drawn in by getting started guides and webinars, things that really break concepts down into their constituent elements in manageable chunks, like projects or our Hardware 101 series. So as a company, to reach these people, you really want to be hosting good documentation for each of your modules and posting exciting projects for each stage of the learning curve. Okay, so type two, the polymath is an explorer. They're just starting to build complete projects based on guides and looking to learn by seeing how other people's projects are built. We've all seen that thing, that one beautiful thing that made us really excited to dig into a new hobby. We all want to explore and develop interesting skills in a field that fascinates us, but many of those remain dreams. What really tips us over the edge and drives us further is the discovery of what we could build. And that's where a lot of companies trip up. They market their tools as omnipotent, with infinite potential. Isn't that exciting? But almost nothing is more intimidating than the blank page or the empty slate. Our community fills that page with ideas and gives blueprints for each. As a learner, it's a route from inspiration to creation. And as a company, it's your chance to show how your product really shines, what it's best at, and how to use it for those things, giving people that first push. If you're an individual, light that spark by checking out projects on a topic that excites you. You can sort by difficulty so it feels more approachable. And our newsletter delivers our top picks every week for your inspiration. If you're releasing hardware, I urge you to share examples of how to interface with each part of your product through code. Remembering that while some of your audience will be software engineers looking to get their hands dirty with hardware, some don't already have that expertise. Do you advertise that it works with servos? Show us how with a reference design. It doesn't have to be complex. This is for inspiration and information. Sometimes something more simple is more approachable and more fun, even for experienced builders. But that doesn't mean boring. Look for ways to draw people in on their own terms. Next up, the alchemist is a tinkerer. They're ready to mod existing projects and design their own. This is where the hack in Hackster comes in. It means to adapt existing tech to your needs, to use your creativity, putting together multiple existing ideas to synthesize something new, using things in unexpected ways. It also means a smart way to make your life better. The alchemist asks, why start at square one every time? You can find pathways that are already built, and then you can choose to follow them or go your own way. This stage is where individuals can really start to take advantage of open source to ramp up their own skills and build more advanced devices. You might start playing with Adafruit's open source circuit designs, learning from them to build custom feather wings or other compatible modules. You might create add-ons for PX4 copters with the Autarian base. Open source hardware makes it way easier, and you can feedback by sharing your own work with the community. As for businesses, both of those things increase the attractiveness and allure of your product to others who might adopt it. 
Plus, you never know, they could be students who want to dig into something new, or company engineers working on passion projects on the side, playing with new technologies they've heard about, either of which could lead to serious sales when they bring their knowledge into the workplace. Or you might even end up hiring them. A definite win-win. On Hackster, we support these folks with platform hubs, where you can explore applications for a specific tech that interests you. And maybe it's time to start publishing your own projects, establishing a portfolio, like a GitHub profile for hardware. Fourth, the challenger is our contestant. Some are simply motivated by new challenges. Others want to show off their skills, defy expectations, crush the competition, and be recognized for their achievements. Nothing wrong with that. Hackathons and contests offer a huge benefit to the community. They set up a direct line of communication between a company and a whole new crop of enthusiasts. They challenge teams to come up with fresh new applications for existing tech, and they stress test that tech and its documentation. If your setup instructions are vague, you will know by the end of the contest, and that can be a good thing. We've seen a contest winner get hired because of the extensive, extensive negative feedback he gave. It's a good thing. Individuals can get noticed, get rewarded, and get free materials with hands-on support, direct from the source. On Hackster, they get to use their projects as a portfolio and show off their rewards. Companies can find and support brilliant minds who are motivated. You can incentivize them to discover your technology. And on Hackster, you can continue to show off those designs, which stay available as part of the ecosystem and become resources for future users. Open source comes in here because, as for the alchemist, it helps you stand on the shoulders of giants and ramp up quickly. It's basically a high pressure, high reward version of that, daring you to put together an MVP in a weekend or a few months from what you're given and from what you can dig up. Open source is the bread and butter of these competitions. And that leads us into the astronomer. Our fifth personality type is a visionary and a connector. They want to be in the room where it happens, to share advice and information because they know that networks are powerful. And they like to be at the forefront, riding the wave and sharing the newest news. In my experience, these people are drawn to DevRel positions, where they get to talk about the technologies they love with like-minded people, and share their skills with those who come after, like astronomers mapping interactions between the celestial bodies and drawing charts for other stargazers. They may also be a professional engineer with some time to indulge their passions, play with new tech, and share their findings. Open source really kicks in here. As an individual, if your company is open source friendly, you get to talk about your projects, and they'll love you for it. You get to share groundbreaking tools with the community and pay it forward, and if you move on, you also get to keep using those tools that you've built, and the expertise that goes with it. If you need specific integrations, you may get to build those on the job, especially with the newest technologies when everyone's team has limited resources. And if you're leading a company, you get to take advantage of the same things! Build a good product, and people may volunteer their time to make sure it works with their favorite tools. Plus, you get to walk the walk with your progressive values. As for Hackster, astronomers get to chat in the comments of each project, or each platform, to ask readers for suggestions, or ask authors for more info. They can connect with each other on social posts that interest them. Not to brag, but we're consistently told that we have one of the most positive and constructive communities. You may even get to share your work on Hackster Cafe and answer questions from the community in real time. Plus, right now, we have the Impact Summit coming up, focused on sustainability tech for air and water. You should definitely join us to chat with others who are tackling the world's big problems. Okay, number six, the catalyst. This person is ready to plant their own seeds. This person is starting to sell their own tech, either directly, through crowdfunding, or through a distributor like Crowdsupply or Tindy, Adafruit, SparkFun, or even Newark and Premier Farnell. These folks can benefit from open source by getting help from the community to work out the kinks in their designs. And the more they interact, the more they can increase awareness and adoption. By making their designs open source, say by using modular or 3D printed parts, or selling kits with instructions for home assembly, they can help drive down the cost and that encourages more people to buy. If they love it, the community may even pitch in with variations or adaptations in a time of scarce components, and they will also tell you what they want, which may or may not be what they want to buy, but feedback is good. Other enthusiasts embrace products that they can make their own, and it feels good to know that they're supporting their compatriots. By sharing your product as a component on Hackster, you can show more people how to play with it and encourage them to share their own explorations. You can even run a community contest, by yourself or together with others, to get your tech into more hands. And when you're ready to scale up, allow us to introduce you to Avnet, a certain hardware distributor who would love to get to know you. Finally, the architect is someone who's thinking about the big picture, with questions like, what do our best tomorrows look like? And what tools do we build today to make those tomorrows happen? Maybe you have a deep tech background. Maybe you're a founder. Maybe both, but you know your legacy will be the difference you can make in the world. And you want to support yourself and others by making excellent tools. And when you're building something big, you start to dig into the essential questions around open source. 
What are the benefits? Interoperability, as described by Ramon Roche in this article. Security. With more eyes on your code, fewer issues slip past into production, and edge cases are caught faster before they can become huge problems. You can offer more transparency and prove privacy. You may get contributions from the community in the form of documentation and troubleshooting. You can increase adoption by enabling add-ons and extensions or offering customizability, with robust controls and waivers, of course. You can attract and retain developers who want to be able to share their work. You may even achieve immortality. If people love your product, they'll work to make sure that it lives on. And you too can take advantage of open source. If you're using open tools, it's faster and easier for developers to get started with your product. Plus, you'll be able to upgrade the systems that you rely on, contribute back, and help keep them alive. Of course, it may also limit you in certain ways. You may not be able to work with some government contractors. Allowing users to export their own data may require you to build a polished interface, which may not always be on the table. And you have to decide where to draw the line on support. A strong community can jump in here a bit with forums and Discord and so on, which also require a moderation to keep them healthy. As for pricing, you can still charge for authentic parts that carry your guarantee, and for access to official support and handholding, especially for priority customers. In terms of adoption and community building, as we mentioned before, with more contributors to documentation, integrations, and repair, you can offer so much more to users. As for copycats, your tech can be stolen anyway but you can use licenses that enable the types of behaviors you want to encourage while prohibiting others. And whatever you choose, if you have a cool enough product, it's likely that it will happen, and you'll have to choose what to do in that situation. But don't stress, no one says that you have to open source everything. You can open up your PCB files, CAD files for parts and enclosures, connectors, bill of materials, and software. You can publish an API. If you want to be really good, develop your product on free and open source software so people don't have to buy an expensive license to extend your work. You can also make simple, repair-friendly choices, like using common fasteners instead of glue, and publishing repair guides to extend the life of your products. As I mentioned before, you can use a license that allows or disallows adaptations, commercial use, and other restrictions. And for a real pro move, share projects that teach people how to use your tech. You never know. You might end up building a team of alchemists, challengers, and astronomers. Hack on.